I'm going to calculate the sweet spot. So everyone's talking about the torpedo bat. Uh, the torpedo bat is the baseball bat that's used uh, that's supposed to you know, be like magic, plus five magic bat. Uh, but it, it's a bat with mass distribution that gives a better diameter at the sweet spots. But I want to talk about what is the sweet spot and calculate the sweet spot for just a, a plain stick. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a demo. So, so I have here a hanging stick. And, you know, if I hit the stick, just at, at some particular location, then two things are going to happen, right? Uh, the center of mass is going to move, and it can also rotate. So it can do two things. Now, if we hit it just right in the middle, and imagine this is frictionless, I hit it right in the middle, then the whole thing would just shift and it wouldn't rotate at all. If I hit it down at the bottom, then it's going to move and rotate this way. Uh, what we want to do is to find out where could I hit it so that the top point would not move initially at all. So it's going to rotate about that point. Now, you can hear what happens when it's at the sweet spot because if I was holding this point right here at the sweet and it's hit at the sweet spot, it wouldn't move back. It would just rotate and it sounds different too. So sometimes they call this the uh, the spot of percussion or something like that. I don't really care what they call it. Uh, so I'm going to hit this down at the bottom and listen, listen to what it sounds like. Okay, you hear like a, a ringing sound. Now I'm going to hit it right at the sweet spot, which is right here. Maybe you didn't hear a difference. There, that one, that one actually did sound right. Okay, so when I hit it right there, it moves and rotates, but this point is initially at rest. And that's what we want to calculate. Where do we hit it so that that happens? Let's get to it. I'm going to put my sticks down and I'm going to pick up my chalk. Chalk. So imagine I have a frictionless plane uh, and I have a stick. And I'm going to call this stick, it has a length R, right? Because I don't want to use L. It has a mass capital M. And then I have a ball coming in with the lower uh, mass m, and I'm going to call this v b. It has the initial velocity of the ball, and it's going to hit it at some point. Okay. Now let's calculate this as uh, the distance from here to there. I'm going to call d. That's the location that it gets hit. So when it gets hit, we have two things that can happen, right? The first is, let's say the ball hits and bounces back this way, so it's going to have a change momentum delta p ball, like that. Well, if I have the center of mass of the stick right there, I, it doesn't really matter, I, I will need that in a little bit, then in, in order to conserve momentum, this would have to have uh, delta p stick is equal to negative delta p ball. Right, because the change momentum has to be zero. Okay, so if this starts from rest, then the change momentum of the stick is going to be the final velocity, which is going to be m v stick. I'm just going to call it v stick because I don't have an initial one, minus the initial velocity v zero, and that's going to be equal to it's in the positive direction, and that's going to be equal to this negative constant, and this is just in the x direction. So I'm just going to say negative p v. Right, everything was in the x direction. So that's that. And I've read it too big, and that's kind of weird. Why am I writing big right now? I feel big. Okay, let's just put it up here. So I'm going to put mvs equals negative delta pb. So I know that's true. Okay, and that doesn't matter where I hit it. That's going to be true, the recoil velocity. Now, suppose I hit it at some location d, then there's another conserved quantity. Because the net torque on the system, this ball is going to exert a force on the stick, and the stick is going to exert a force back, so the net torque is going to be zero. And if the net torque is zero, the angular momentum is also conserved. So we can write angular momentum, I'm going to write it out as a, as a vector L. It's going to be R cross P for a point mass, uh, and then like the ball, and then L for the stick is going to be R cross p plus i omega. If the stick is moving 
and rotating a moving rotating stick, we can describe the angular momentum two ways, right? I could just describe the, uh, the moment of inertia about the stick, about the center, um, or I could pick a point that doesn't move and this calculate the recalculate the moment of inertia. But I know the moment of inertia stick about the middle, I, so I can calculate the moment of inertia as it rotates about the stick plus the moment of inertia as the stick moves. Now, one of the things with moment of inertia and one of the things with angular momentum is it does depend on your point, your reference point. So I need to pick a reference point. Now, here is the trick, okay? If I pick this location right there about which I want to calculate the angular momentum, I'm gonna get a bonus, right? Because the angular momentum of the ball, since it's moving right into that point, then R cross P is going to be always zero. So the initial angular momentum of the system, the stick's not moving, is zero. So I'm gonna write it as a scalar, L zero equals zero. The initial angular momentum is zero. I'm still writing too big. Why am I writing so big? L zero equals zero. And that means that the final angular momentum of the stick has to be zero. But the stick has two types of angular momentum, right? It has motion angular momentum about that point. I'm going to call that point O. That's LO, I guess. Uh, and then it's going to have rotational angular momentum. So let's write the expression for that. So uh, L final is going to be the R cross P. So here we have that's going to be R right? And then P is that way. So R cross P would be into the board. So it's going to be a negative angular momentum. So I'm going to call this distance right here. This is D and that's R over 2. So this is going to be D minus R over 2 times momentum R cross P, but they're perpendicular. So the momentum is going to be, I'll write it as this, M V S. And that's negative. Now the other angular momentum is going to be I omega. And so that's going to be, it's going to rotate, let's say it, we don't want it to, we don't want that point to move at all, so it's actually going to rotate this way, so that would be a positive angular momentum plus I omega. And this has to be equal to zero. And so now we don't even really care about the ball, right? Because we, because we, we remove that ball from the system by picking that point uh, that of contact to calculate the angular momentum. Now we have some things here, right? I'm trying to solve for this distance d. r over 2, r I want. The mass I don't want. i, I can use the moment of inertia of a stick. So let's say i is going to be 1 12th m r squared. That's the moment of inertia of a stick as it rotates about its center. So I can use that. So no m and no r. And now the other thing is omega, right? So omega is the angular velocity uh, about this point right here. Well, it is related to the velocity because I want the angular velocity such that this point doesn't move. So that's going to be uh, stationary. Then that means that this has to move with the velocity of Vs. Uh, so we can say omega is, okay, let me get this right, Vs over dr over 2, right? Because r over 2 is the length of the whole thing. Why did I call the whole thing length r? I'm not sure. Um, so if this is moving with a, a speed vs, but it's rotating at that same speed, it's just like a wheel, right? So r omega is going to be the velocity, or omega is vs over r over 2, and that's the radius r over 2. That was my mistake. I, I apologize for that. So let's put all this stuff in. I now have zero equals negative d, mi negative d minus r over two, m vs plus one twelfth m r squared, that's i, and then omega is gonna be two vs over r. And I wanna solve for t. So I can do that. Uh, the first thing you see right here really nice Mass cancels, because I can divide both sides by the mass. The velocity cancels, too. So now I have, uh, I'm going to move this to the other side, d 
minus r over 2 is going to be 1 12th, and then I have a 2, so I have a 2. So 2 over 12, r squared over r, which is just r. So 2 over 12 is 1 6th. And I'm going to add this to the other side, so I get d equals r over 2 plus r over 6. So this is going to be equal to uh, 3 over 6, or 4r over 6. So d is going to be equal to 2 thirds r. And that's the location for this stick, right? So if you'll look right here, I put a mark. And what I did was to measure the length of the whole thing and then calculate uh, two-thirds of the way down, and that's where you hit it for this sweet spot here. Now, if you don't have a uniform stick, a, not a uniform density stick, then this would change, and so you'd have a different location. Um, you may have to do some calculations to find that moment of inertia. Um, if you have some weird shape, it may not be easy. But that's how you do that. So this would be at a different location if you have a different moment of inertia. There you go. Sweet spot. Calculation. And that's it. There, I got the thumbs up. Okay.